stacks of bodies. That is how a San Antonio fire official described the very gruesome discovery of dozens of migrants found dead in a tractor trailer last night. The death toll unfortunately climbing today from 46 to 51. Ken Molestina is live in San Antonio with more on the information known now and how people are now reacting to all of this. Ken. Yes, yeah, Steve and Nicole, this is one of those stories that really uh, throughout the day just became increasingly more and more heartbreaking. Uh, that death toll we know now sitting at 51. Officials had anticipated that the death toll would rise today, and unfortunately it did. The extra deaths that were reported throughout the day today come by way of some of the migrants who were removed from the scene here yesterday. They were still alive, taken to local hospitals, but unfortunately they succumbed to their injuries. So again, that death toll at 51. We know uh, that they all died from extreme heat related related traumas. This is now a fully federally investigated case. The uh, Department of uh, Homeland Security Investigation, HSI, is now looking into this case. This is all of it is in their hands now, and three people have been arrested. We know that much today. The rest is still very much under investigation. And among the people that came out here today to the scene to be here was a Dallas man, a painter, an artist, who explains why he felt the need to come down here. Robert Marquez made the drive from DFW to San Antonio and set up his mural to remember those who died. And I'm here to bring that, that story to the canvas. Just down the road from where the dozens of bodies were found in a tractor trailer. This tragedy that just happened here is to touch me so hard. Marquez has been traveling across the state the past few years to paint in honor of victims of human tragedies and strife. He's done this kind of work before along the border many times and most recently in Uvalde. But on this day, the call to paint was here in San Antonio for the dozens of men, women and children who at this point remain nameless. Roberto, do you consider yourself a human tragedy artist now? Yes, sir. I do consider my, 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 uh, uh, self a human tragedy artist that I've been doing this for so long. Does that and break your heart? It, it really does. It really does. When people are talking about migrants, I don't call them migrants. I call them my brothers. An immigrant himself, Marquez, tells me he feels a kinship to all those risking everything to reach the American dream. So with every paint stroke, he hopes to keep alive the stories of those who perished trying to make it here. Hopefully my paintings will come into the people's mind and, and, and remember that this is not somebody's problem. It's everyone's. So again, uh, last night uh, when we all went to bed, 46 was the count throughout the day. Today, that number has gone up to 51. I was told earlier today by a representative with uh, LULAC, a, uh, an immigrant advocate organization, uh, that many of the migrants came from a variety of uh, different Central American countries, and that includes Mexico, Honduras, and even Guatemala. But again, uh, those notifications now, those very painful, heartbreaking notifications being made now between American officials and the uh, nationals, uh, the, uh, the governments from uh, the different places where these uh, folks uh, originated from. Uh, Steve, Nicole. We keep hearing this, and it's just so sad. We have to say these words yet again. Ken, as you know, you've covered immigration and border issues for a number of years, spent time in these communities. Explain to folks what the typical smuggling process looks like for people who actually end up to the logic that they end up in the back of a truck or an 18-wheeler. Yeah, and I want to point out, Steve, uh, what you talked about, uh, you're saying the, the typical process. Of course, uh, this investigation is still ongoing, and, and we don't know uh, the full details of exactly how all of this happened. But to your question, uh, the typical process of, of, of how all of this happens, uh, it, it usually goes something like this. The migrants enter the United States through the southern border, but they, don't, they do not come in on trucks. They come in on foot. Uh, and they do not come in mostly, typically, as you mentioned, through ports of entry. They either uh, cross the river, they climb a fence, or in some cases they even uh, make entry into the United States uh, using tunnels. And they're guided by the smugglers. In Spanish, they call them coyotes. And so when they get onto the American side, if they're not caught by border officials, they're taken to nearby stash houses down at the border. Once those stash houses fill up, then those same smugglers 
grab the groups and they put them onto either vans, uh, trucks, 18 wheelers in this case, and they bring them up north. Uh, they bring them to places like San Antonio. They take them to places like DFW sometimes. Even further north along uh, I-35, uh, it's at those points then that they drop these uh, migrants off and they're reunited then with loved ones. That's where they come to pick, uh, get picked up. Sometimes they get on buses themselves and they continue their trek northward. But typically, uh, as you uh, asked, Steve, that is the process of how the migrants make their way north uh, from the border. They don't necessarily cross the border on these trucks already. Many times, if they did that, they, they'd get caught by officials at the border. Absolutely. Kim Melestina, we thank you. We know you'll keep us yeah. updated on all of this. Thank you.